Hello Libra, welcome to your reading for April 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like to look into your own personal situation, you can go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below. Um, and if you don't know exactly what kind of reading you would like, just tell me a little bit about the situation you would like to gain some clarity on and I will help you pick out the best option. Yes? Just a few announcements before we get started. First, if you are in the New York City area and you would like to book an in-person reading with me, you have two options. One, on Fridays, I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop. The uh, link to their website is in the description box below. Check them out, give them a call, and you can pre-book a session. I'll be there from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Friday. Also, your second option is on Saturdays at Collective, also here in New York City. If you would like to pre-book a 20-minute session, uh, just email Chloe at collectivenyc.com. Her email address is also in the description box below. I am uh, I am there on Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yes. Also, I will be at a special event, Awaken Fair in Tarrytown. That is on the 28th of April. If you're in the area and you would like to get an in-person reading with me, you can pre-book those. We have 15 and 30 minute sessions available. The link to the pre-booking system is also in the description box. Keep in mind that pre-booking ends on the 27th. The event is on the 28th and it is in Tarrytown, New York. That is in Westchester County. Yes. Okay. So for the readings this month, I'm keeping it the same as I did last month. Obviously, we're having a face-to-face -face conversation, which I actually kind of enjoy um, quite a bit. Uh, but then I'm doing it the same way that I did last month. So I'm getting an oracle card for the beginning of your month. and uh, Well, not the beginning of the month. To get the overall energy or the theme for your month. And then I will be pulling the normal freestyle spread with the tarot for the energies to for our discussion. I'm using the unicorns for the oracle, the unicorn oracle cards, and the golden universal tarot for the rest of the reading. Yeah? Okay, so without further ado, let's just get straight to it, Libra. Let's see what we've got for you. April 2019, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Librans, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for April 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, oh, <laughs> all right, Libra. Let's see what we've got here for you. So I am recording this on the 30th of March. So we have just come out of uh, Mercury Retrograde as of the recording of this reading, but we're going through a shadow period for the next two weeks. So like midway through April is when we will finally be out of the woods of this really rough Mercury retrograde season, okay? So just keep, keep that in mind, guys. All right, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I'm gonna give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for you, okay? Let's see here, Libra. Your theme for the month. Ooh, there we go. Miracles. Ooh, all right, all right. Have faith that your miracle is on the way. Your prayers have been answered. Surrender the how. Now, here's the thing about that Mercury retrograde situation. It was very, very emotional, okay? It was um, in Pisces, and I know personally, for me, it hit me really hard. Much harder than any Mercury retrograde that really has hit me in the past, at least to my conscious memory. And as I was working through it, I came to the realization that anything that was coming up in the emotional section or sector was meant for me to heal through that and redefine certain things. And I really do feel like some of you, it may have been during that retrograde season, uh, a period, but it also could have been just in general, many of you have been hoping and praying 
working on changing your lives, working on changing your circumstances, working on manifesting something new, something better, or something that's in more alignment with you. And you, the universe is kind of giving you a wink here, saying, you know, your prayers have been heard and they are being and or have been answered. Actually, in spiritual truth, they have been answered already. It's just a matter of manifesting it, aligning with it, and manifesting it and coming into, uh, bringing it into fruition, but also within divine time. Timing, okay. Yeah, I really do feel like some of you are kind of like anxiously like, when is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? How am I ever going to make this possible? Thinking about all the steps that you need to take in order for something to happen. And that's really not the way it works as far as the universe goes. I mean, the universe will handle it. All you really need to do is work on remaining in alignment with it or re remaining in alignment with what it is you desire and keeping that feeling, cultivating the feeling of what it feels like or what it would feel like to have already reached that goal or obtained that thing that you're praying for or wishing for. And that is what will help the universe align it in and bring it into your life. Yes, I just saw 555 five, five on the counter. So there are some big changes coming, Libra. You, I mean, but I mean patience, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give this three more shuffles, Libra. And then we'll see what we've got for you for the month of April 2019. Libra. Libra. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Yes, there's definitely some relationship stuff wanting to be manifested here. Okay. Alrighty. Overall energy. Now, especially when it comes to relationships, one of the biggest things that I've learned recently is really don't put any sort of, well, the, the, the more of, the more expectations that you can really let go of, like expectations of who it is, who, how they show up, when they show up, why they show up, whatever. When you really let go of that, that's what really helps the universe well, it gives the universe the most space to actually bring it to you in ways that you really may ne would never even be able to imagine or dream of because the universe is, the consciousness of the universe is way more expansive than that of the human mind, okay? So you just keep that in mind, all right, Libra? My, 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 look at that. We were just talking about that, the Knight of Cups. So for some of you, I do feel like you're manifesting someone to come in. Now, also for some of you, you may want be wanting to um, send some type of love to someone, make an offer to someone. This is a very flirty energy, okay? So it may not be really all that serious. Um, a, a, maybe it's a friendship that turns romantic in a way. Um, all of a sudden, maybe sparks just start flying out of nowhere and you're kind of like, well, what the hell is this? I didn't expect this. Where did this come from? Well, you see, that's the universe at work doing things to bring you what it is you what what it is you want, and you never really would have even thought of it that way, right? Okay, um, but also the thing here that the Knight of Cups has been talking about the most is this heart, cosmic heart chakra awakening that everybody is going through right now. Um, awakening to what your truest forms of goals or your truest desires uh, and aspirations are. So especially during that Mercury retrograde seat, uh, situation that we just came out of, um, well, we're still in the process of coming out of it in the pro in, in, at the time of this recording, which is March 30th. But, um, you know, Coming that that Mercury in retrograde period was very much about realigning with your heart center, and getting re in touch or aligning with um, true forms of who you truly are. Clearing up your heart, opening opening up your heart, op expanding your heart. I mean, that's going on across the board. I can't tell you how many personal readings I've done in which this right here, this specifically has come up. Okay, so. That's really great. Let's see what else we've got here for you. The Ten of Pentacles, lessons learned, family, um, longevity, um, long-term investment, working towards the long-term, okay? So especially for those of you that are really experiencing a strong heart chakra awakening, this is all, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. And the universe is here to try to, well, it's coming through to try and uh, remind you that you ha have faith, your prayers have been answered. So where it may feel like, you know, 
the universe may be ignoring you or you're not getting what you want, blah, blah, blah. It's actually much bigger than that. You are getting what you want. But in getting what you want, some of, some of that includes having to clear away space for it, which means clearing out your heart chakra, purging, um, purging old experiences, old pains, um, belief systems, and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, and yeah, there you go. Look, doing that hard work, the Eight of Pentacles, to craft yourself. Now, some of, for some of you, this is very much, wow, this is very much about business, okay? So we could be, we could really could be talking uh, creative advent, well, creative adventures, yes, but finances and career, okay? And then at the bottom of, underneath that, you have the Two of Pentacles, which is very much your type of energy here. The Two of Pentacles does talk about balance, and Libra, you are all about balance. Um, there needs to be, for some of you, there really needs to be a strong balance that needs to come into play, and it absolutely has to do with your emotions. But this is coming through with the pentacle suit because it's the physical work in the physical realm that you're having to do to bring yourself into balance. For some of you, that absolutely includes diet, exercise, uh, um, you know, mental fitness, um, but also clearing out a bunch of things that no longer serve you, okay? That in the long run are only going to stop you from achieving what it is you want down the road. So now is the time to clear that up. For some of you, you may be very much feeling like you're in between worlds, which is kind of weird, um, a weird feeling, and you're not exactly sure. Then that where that's where the height of the confusion around is this actually going to happen, or what else do I need to do, or what at all do I need to do to bring this into play? Don't worry about that. Just worry about maintaining your own balance and maintaining your alignment with that which you wish to manifest. Okay. Now, part of maintaining that alignment is clearing out belief systems and burdens that keep you from actually believing that this is possible in coming through, okay? So, yeah, that's part of the hard work that's going on here with the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah. I'm just seeing a lot of reconstruction of your heart center here, and it's absolutely focused on the long term. And there are a lot of strong lessons that are needing to be learned here in terms of that. And the Ten of Pentacles specifically, and if you've been following me for some time, you've been hearing me recently say that, you know, the Tens themselves are lessons learned. But the Ten of Pentacles specifically is about lessons learned, in my opinion, at least, because we do come to this physical realm to learn these lessons. And so we have to be here in these physical bodies and these physical circumstances to learn these lessons. So that's really what this 10 of pentacles is, is speaking to right here for you guys. And it absolutely has to do with clearing up your heart, cleaning up your heart, expanding and strengthening your heart center, strengthening the energies within your heart. That's going to help you see clearly, see things for what they are, learn these lessons, and move forward towards what you want, okay? Okay, moving forward, let's get into the surrounding energies. Now, uh, normally I was um, saying that uh, these were, you know, your first half of the month, second half of the month. It doesn't have to be that way, okay? It can just be first half of the reading, second half of the reading. Everything is intermixed, intertwined, and interconnected. If it resonates that this is the first half and second half of your month, then go with that. But if not, then just don't worry about it, okay? Getting into the first half of your reading, first set of surrounding energies for the month of April, you've got the Queen of Pentacles. That's beautiful. For some of you, this is a feminine energy either coming in or you wanting to express some sort of love to her. There is a lot of pentacles energy in this situation so far for your month of April. So I really do feel like this is very physically oriented, obviously. For some of you, you are embodying the queen of pentacles. Potentially it could be a Capricorn, but it could be an, another earth sign too, um, Taurus or Virgo. You also could be dealing with a, Pis a Piscean, Pisces, or maybe another water sign, Cancer or Scorpio. Um, yeah, but uh, it can uh, Capricorn specifically because the Queen of Pentacles is the uh, cardinal archetype in the Earth sign, and um, 
the cardinal sign is Capricorn. For some of you, this is you embodying this energy of the Queen of Pentacles. And for, mo for the most part, I feel like you're embodying this energy of the Queen of Pentacles and turning it towards yourself. What is that? Well, the Queen of Pentacles is a very loving, very caring, very motherly type energy, but she can be very, very stern. The thing about her is that she understands the hardships of life. She understands the lessons that are needed to be learned and the difficulty that can come with that because the earth plane is really not an easy plane to deal with. So she is no she is no stranger to giving second chances, but she is very intelligent and she is very much so, uh, um, focused on intelligence or acquiring intelligence, learning, achieving, maybe even teaching. I'm feeling that you're pulling this energy towards yourself because you're recognizing, or at least you need to be, recognizing the work that you're doing here to strengthen your heart chakra with this, also with this Knight of Cups. For some of you, this is a feminine energy. It doesn't have to be a woman. It can be a man that embodies more of the feminine energies than the masculine energies. But for some of you, it's a very loving, caring, compassionate, and feminine energy. But she might just, or they might just be very like, look, let's just get down to work. Let's just do this, okay? We've got somewhere we want to be. So either, like, <laughs> she could be saying it this way. Stop crying about it and just get, get to work. Like, like... Uh, just get to work. Just do it. Because it's not going to happen until you do the work. So, like, it's not going to happen if you're just going to sit there and mope about it. Like, let's stop moping. Let's just do the work and get it over with so we can learn the lessons and get to where we're trying to go. Or at least just get a little closer. Get the ball rolling. Get the momentum going, okay? I mean, she's... Uh, me, personally, I see the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords as, like, besties. Only the Queen of Pentacles is has more em emotion invested in it. The Queen of Swords is nowhere near trying to work with the emotions, but the Queen of Pentacles gets it. But their sternness, their directness, down to the point energy is very, I mean, sisterhood. Like, they're sisters, <laughs> okay? I mean, all four of them are sisters, but they are the closest between the two of them, right? Okay, that's my personal opinion. Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the Chariot. You could actually really be dealing with a Cancerian. You could have Cancer in your chart, um, but yeah, I mean, Queen of Pentacles with the Chariot. I mean, like, let's get the ball rolling. Balls to the wall, pedal to the metal, iron to the grind. Let's freaking do it. You know what I mean? Like, this is very much getting the motivation and the determination, the co the commitment um, to do the work that you need to do. But this is in doing the work that you need to do towards greater fulfillment, moving towards your passions. The chariot is a very passionate energy, and it is all about bringing yourself into balance, integrating your dark with your light, your shadow with your light, in order to use the two of them together in tandem to drive you to where you want to go, okay? That's beautiful. There really could be a feminine energy or like a mother grandmother, a mentor, or something, or someone just very compassionate, very loving, very caring that is here to encourage you as you get going, to help motivate you even, because I do feel like some of you are kind of feeling like, meh, I don't want to do it, and it's just like, no, come on, come on, get up, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to be successful, everything's going to be okay, the, don't worry about the failures, the failures help you learn something, let's just do it, okay? That's excellent, Libra, like, if you do have someone around you like that, cherish them, okay? Because sometimes it's hard to find really true compassionate energies that are willing to stick with it with you, okay? So take that as it is. Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reader, you got the Five of Swords. But see, this is that energy that I was just picking up on. Um, it's a self-defeatist energy. Some of you are really feeling like, you know, defeated. Um, broken down. Maybe some, some, maybe some sort of competition has really gotten to you and it's like broken you down to like almost nothing. But uh, honestly, in this situation, I do feel like this is actually a good thing. Even though this Five of Swords energy is extremely destructive, this is one of the most destructive energies in the entire deck, okay? Um, yeah. 
<laughs> Did you hear that alarm? I really do feel like that's a wake up, a blaring wake up call to like, excuse my language, but get up off your ass and just start doing it. Because the more you sit in this defeatist energy, the longer it's going to take for you to actually reach your goals. And even though this five of swords is one of the most destructive energies in the deck, maybe other than the tower, but I do see the tower as way more positive than the five of swords. This is just like complete carnage for no reason. Um, this, however, feels like it's a catalyst for you to get up and start making changes, okay? Some of you may have had some really destructive people around you, narcissistic even, very competitive, very gossipy, um, and all that kind of stuff. And now that your heart is opening, you're really starting to feel the weight of that, and it's tearing you down. Well, that is a sign that you need to start making some changes. So there you go, catalyst energy, right? Okay, Five of Swords is coupled with... The Page of Wands, beautiful. Just like I was saying, whatever this, this destructive, competitive energy is in the Five of Swords, it's helping you redefine yourself. The Page of Wands is very much about self-discovery, self-realization. So I do feel like some of you are really having to move away from really destructive energies here, okay? Your challenge in the first half of your reading, you've got the King of Cups, Scorpio energy, potentially. Uh, you could have a partner that is really destructive in terms of this, like, that just that sting of the Scorpio. Again, it could be another water sign, Cancer or Pisces. But also, the King of Cups definitely, especially recently, has been representing the... Um, the energies of taking emotional responsibility. So if you're having, if you're finding that there are some people around you that are really destructive, really mean, narcissistic, nasty, catty, competitive, gossipy, whatnot, whatever, you have to take responsibility for that and be like, look, I don't want this energy around me anymore. There is some action that I need to take because I, I, I don't like being in this type of energy or being around these types of people. Now, for some of you, you are... There, there is a, a romantic situation here in which you are realizing maybe how you've been self-destructive in the past or maybe how you've kind of been denying this connection that you may have with someone and now it's time to step up and start taking some sort of action here with the King of Cups, okay? King of Cups is coupled with the Nine of Swords. Some of you, someone wants to take some sort of action here. Either this is you, Libra, or maybe it's another person. Again, it could potentially be a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Doesn't really have to be. It also could be a earth sign, Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. And I actually, I'm kind of picking up specifically that it really could be a Taurus. <coughs> Excuse me, because sometimes when Taurans... My friend, my very, very good friend, Betsy of Fearless Intuition, describes it this way, and she's so spot on. Because me, as a Taurus son in Western astrology, when I get into my emotions, I'm very defeatist like this uh, at certain points. Um, but this King of Cups with the Nine of Swords energy, someone is really have, is feeling some type of way, potentially wanting to make some sort of move but um, and, and make some sort of offer, extend some sort of offer, but they're super anxious about it. And so often when Taurans are up in their energy or up in their, uh, their emotions, specifically, or rather, um, they do show up as the King of Cups. So this could specifically be a Taurus. Maybe you have Taurus in your chart somewhere, but... Um, Either this is anxiety around making some sort, taking some sort of action in terms of what your heart truly wants, or taking responsibility. And specifically, if it's taking responsibility for your situation, sorry guys, my nose is itching. It often does that when I channel. But um, specifically for some of you, when it comes to taking responsibility for your life, this is the realization that it's like, whoa, the only reason I am being affected by these energies is because I have let them into my, my system or I have let them into my space and I have got to do something about it. Specifically, also, there could be a really strong narcissist around you and you don't know what to do about it. And the challenge is to break free from that. That's fairly challenging. Your closing message or potential outcome here in the first half of your reading, you've got the Knight of Pentacles. That's excellent. See, slow and steady does, in, in fact, win the race. Even with this Queen of Pentacles energy that was coming out with the Chariot wanting to take some sort of action or needing to take some sort of action and the encouragement to do so, no one is asking you to do it right away. No one is saying to you that you have to do this right now and that it has to happen right now. No. All you need to do is just start moving. If you want to take baby steps, 
take baby steps. It's okay as long as you're moving. That is exactly what this Queen of Pentacles says. As long as we're moving, it doesn't matter how long it takes because we've got the passion. We're moving towards what we want. So just get going. It's, you got to pick yourself up, Libra. Don't, don't, this defeatist attitude, that just ain't you, boo. Got to get up and just start moving. The only way to change your reality is to start, start taking steps. And if that just means moving slowly and take doing like heart chakra meditations or starting to do yoga or, you know, maybe even working out a little bit, a little bit every day will start to add up and make a difference. All right. So don't worry about it. Just get moving. Okay. Knight of Pentacles is coupled with, hey, now the King of Pentacles. Okay, so we've got the counterparts here in this situation. So for some of you, either you're balancing yourself out between masculine and feminine, you're starting with the, the motivation of the feminine and now starting to take action with the king of pentacles, um, or this is your counterpart here. Now this could now this is the Taurus archetype specifically, but again, it could be another uh, another earth sign Virgo or Capricorn. But this King of Pentacles, it, it, it represents honesty, integrity, well manifestation, taking action, financially stable, working towards finance, being financially stabilized. So if you have some sort of dream, vision, or goal that you really want to move forward towards, now the, the, the advice here is to just get moving, okay? Working on manifesting that which you truly desire. Because the king of pentacles, the masculine energies are the fixed energies, yes, but they are the action takers, whereas the feminine energies are the magnetic ones, right? Taking action. Just get moving. Some of you actually could have earth in your chart, and there's a lot of earth energy coming through here. But to be honest, we have everything. Uh, uh, cups, swords, wands, pentacles, and major arcana, which is beautiful. Okay. Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies, you've got ah, the Eight of Swords. Mm, there is so much resistance here. There is so much resistance. Like I'm literally seeing or feeling some of you saying, I don't want to do this. I'm too scared. This is never going to happen. This is never going to work out the way I want. I mean, it's that defeatist attitude. You have to cut yourself out of this mental prison. You are the only one that is that are that is keeping yourself in this prison in this like lockdown. The more that you believe that this is not going to work out, the more that you freak out about this, the more you're of this you're going to manifest. The literally only the literal only way that you can break yourself out of the out of this these chains is to just do it. Just start doing it. Anytime some of these uh, these thoughts or emotions or what anytime this defeatist attitude flares or rears its ugly head, look the other way and focus on what it is you truly want and focus on how you can take action towards that. Again, this is not uh, this is not a race. You don't have to do this fast. You can take baby steps, okay? Eight of Swords is coupled with the Ten of Cups. Yeah, okay. But you see, you have the vision, you know you know what you want to move towards. Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups in this reading, guys. I mean you know what you want to move towards, but you're standing in your own way with this Eight of Swords energy. You are the only person that can break yourself free from these mental, this mental prison, okay? Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Libra. You've got the Nine of Wands. All right. See, this is the energy that this is the energy that either you need to be pulling on with the, the the perseverance, or you're starting to generate here for yourself. Now, for some of you, you've been in this Eight of Swords energy because you didn't know what you want with the Ten of Pentacles, but I do feel like it's starting to come become visible, or you're starting to align with it, says Spirit. And so now there's there's energies generating of just keep going. Okay, this is. Definitely the energies of breaking yourself out of this mental prison with the Eight of Swords here. That's beautiful. So either you need to be adopting this energy or you're starting to generate it yourself just by removing removing this defeatist attitude out of your belief system, okay? Nine of Wands is coupled with... Ah, yes! The Sun! Beautiful! Honestly, this is this is such a switch 
from the first hot set of surrounding energies to the second set of surrounding energies. So some of you are actively starting to break yourselves free from this mental prison with the Eight of Swords and are focusing your vision on what it is you truly want. The sun here with the Nine of Wands is saying, is uh, number one, illuminating things for you so that you can persevere and you can break free and move forward. Others of you are just starting to feel the flow. It's like the the sun is starting to peek through the clouds and you're getting the motivation to just persevere and break yourself free. That's beautiful, Libra. Your challenge in the second half of the reading here, you've got the Four of Swords. Beautiful. So take some time to just rest. Now, this is a challenge, though. You have to change your perspective. And that's what's happening here with the sun and the nine of wands. You're changing your perspective. I really do feel like this is coming through as a challenge because this is kind of hard to do. It's not really all that easy, especially when you have um, a lot of deeply rooted beliefs or experiences that have really only helped to uh, reinforce or solidify some of the hard lessons that you may have been trying, you may be trying to um, unlearn at this point, okay? Um, and it's not that you're trying to unlearn them. Uh, I didn't say that correctly. It's more about, yes, you learn, you're learning, learning the lesson of it, but then breaking yourself out of the rut or the momentum that you have surrounding these lessons that are keeping this energy, this defeatist or this just, this type of energy flowing, you know, changing the momentum, okay? Four of Swords is coupled with Aha, the tower, yes. Changing that perspective, Libra. I mean, this is complete uprooting here. Very much so. Uh, yeah, I was I was taking a moment to see if I can like pick out more to say about this but honestly this this tower moment with the four of swords is literally changing the momentum changing the belief system cutting yourself out of this mental prison here that you may have found that you may find yourself in in favor of going after what it is you truly desire and this really could be what has kept you from achieving your Ten of Cups. So in terms of you learn the lessons with the Ten of Pentacles here in the physical sense, right? You learn the lessons, but now it's time to break free and allow your emotions or this heart chakra that's opening up for you and cleansing and clearing. It's really about breaking the momentum or the cycle that keeps you from achieving what it is you truly want with the Ten of Cups here, okay? That is what this tower moment is speaking to. And that is the change in perspective that is coming into play for you here. Your closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Libra, you've got eight of wands, beautiful, clear and open air to get moving. The momentum is here. The eight of wands and the chariot, okay? Generating that momentum, Okay, that's beautiful. Also some sort of communication. So maybe the air is clear for you to communicate exactly what it is you want. Ten of Pen uh, I'm sorry, uh, King of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. Taking that action, King of Cups. Yes. Knight of Cups also making some sort of offer, making some sort of romantic gesture, moving forward with what it is your heart truly desires, right? Eight of Wands is coupled with Okay, the five of pentacles. I, I, I'm seeing you, you're breaking free. The air is clear. Breaking free from this five of pentacles energy. And this five of pentacles energy absolutely is that self-defeating energy, that defeatist mentality, the lack mentality, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy, not feeling like you can achieve what it is that you want. I'm going to be completely honest with you, Libra. It's bullshit. You can achieve anything that you truly desire, but you have to be the one to take the action. And the action doesn't have to happen quickly, okay? It can be baby steps, but as long as you're moving in that direction towards what you towards fulfilling your heart's desire, that's really all that matters. Okay? It's never too late. Whew. So there you go, Libra. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, just go ahead and email me and I will get you all set up.
Yes, much love to you guys. Have a great month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of May. Yeah, take care. Bye.